Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of uh, Saving Your Disaster Campaign with your hopefully favorite uh, YouTuber, Saiken. It is time for XCOM 2 Legendary Saving Your Disaster Campaign and this time we're continuing our Psionic Escalation Campaign. The enemies are striking back for another retaliation mission in New Brazil. Overall, the campaign has definitely taken a turn for the positive. We got some more experienced soldiers, might I say, and we got we claimed quite a bit of land back. We got the entirety of South America and we got uh, portions at least of Africa, so it's a start. It's not perfect. We just recently expanded to um, Australia and matter of fact, I just realized it's probably a good idea to also make contact over here to get the double agent bonus because why not? It's 80 intel and it just is income. There we go. We do not yet have a tower here. Fair enough. So we're not getting the double agent bonus, but we're improving, substantially improving the income. And that is certainly what counts. Got ourselves, by the way, 180 intel. That means we could, oh, we need more radio relays. Well, I'll, fi I'll take care of uh, that later. We don't want to start on the strategic layer, but I do have an idea. Uh, rapid expansion is now a mong stuff. Anyways, today we're going to take a look at Operation Dismel Sword. The group that I put together is, as always, non psionic characters. You heard me probably uh, throughout the course of the series say it more than once. If you're running a Psy uh, Rush campaign, make sure that you put enough experience in all of the other troops of yours, elsewise you're putting yourself in a very slim corner. That's why I'm exclusively leveling non-psychic characters, because the psychic characters level in their normal training. What you see here in Corporal Watson's hands is the mother of all snipers, the Darklands, the li little bit higher sniper Sergeant uh, Shapira Boss, has the dark claw the pistol mainly because he has already uh, lightning hands and can mm, issue more pistol shots that's how i came up with the distribution there i just realized that in this case the ammunition here totally does not make sense so because the dark claw already has an automated five um, armor penetration in there and we might just want to give him the benefit of a doubt and shooting with blue screen rounds anyways that is our team that we're going to use in order to go in and i think we're going to take it from here let's go it's pretty likely that we're going to run into at least some sort of chosen let's see how this is playing out and our team just landed Good, so first and foremost, let's double check what kind of mission we are dealing with. It's a full-fledged attack and prevent them from killing civilians type of mission, which is fine, just gotta know it in advance. We're aggressively moving in, blue movement turns first. I'm trying my dearest to trigger a pack. We definitely want the high ground here. This here is too dangerous to move. Are we going to trigger anything if we're moving to here? Potentially. That triggered. Oh wow. And we got, ooh, and we got chrysalids. Well, that's gonna be rough. That is going to be very rough. Got the chrysalids here. Boy, boy, do we need to be careful. Okay, <laughs> first things first. This here is it's a very, very dangerous situation and it could go sideways easily. Might not look like it, but I promise you, this here is a 
highly explosive situation with the chrysalids back there. Don't want to mess around with them. Okay, so again, first things first. Let's get rid of most of the cover here. Good, that should do it. There we go, nice one. Softening up the priest. Well, in a perfect world, that would have hit. Moving over teamwork because we will need it soon. Trust me. Still in the softening up part. All right, we got some problems here with the softening up. Didn't want to do it that aggressively, but let's move up. It's only a 70% shot. I'd rather take the 100% uh, damage right there because we need to get him into kill range of profit. Oh, and I can see profit can't even reach him. Well, that's too bad. Only got one target for common protocol. That's not enough. Prophet is moving up. We don't want to trigger the chrysalids. We don't do not want to trigger the chrysalids. Certainly not the optimal play to use. Uh, to use your Templar as a machine gunner. Matter of fact, it is a horrible play, but it works. If you deal enough damage, you'll eventually kill. All right, there we go. First round, a bit rocky overall, but I did not expect that we're going to um, have them coming in from the side. Now with Warlock, it changes quite a bit. Got some stun lancers, immunity to melee damage, regenerates lost health, but close range attacks are going to hurt him badly and Reapers are his nemesis. Told you, we're probably going to fight against the chosen. The chosen aren't going to make this easy for us. Keep your heads down and press forward. And there we go. Chrysalid and a chrysalid. That's already two chrysalids. That's another one right there. And I know fair well that this year is going to trigger two chrysalids. Good. We want to get to the high ground, really. I don't mind which one it is. Could be the one up front here. Or 
One sniper on low ground, one on high ground. That works for me. There we go, starting to build up that focus. Moving up, and let's see if we can hit the chrysalid. Should have probably used our gunner first. Mainly due to the shredding, but also to the holo targeting piece. Alright, and the power of the Dark Lens is really the ability to move first, then issue a shot as if it would be nothing. Which is just fantastic. You gotta love it. It is so unbelievably strong. Getting more focus. And let us move over here. I'm just trying to get a solid position. So it's time for zombies. We're going to get some spectral zombies. Who would have guessed? I hope they are going for the Templar, because Prophet is going to make very short proce uh, progress process with them. There we go. Keep them coming. Oh yeah, Blade Storm Templars are unhumanly strong. There is a reason why they haven't given Templars the Blade Storm ability per default. It just makes them so, so, so strong. It's almost like giving Rangers so assaults the ability to have death from above per default I would consider it an equally strong choice because it resets your action economy as a um, as an assault and the bladestorm really breaks the game for the Templars all of a sudden they get so much more leverage out of uh, out of their melee attacks they cannot miss uh, on top of it which just makes it even more hardcore. Okay. Good. We got our regional income increased a bit and we're kind of on the way slowly but surely to rescue more civilians shouldn't really trigger anything with our movements here got a bit of an overwatch and that's about it we know that there are still four more chrysalids here and i think that's probably going to be it to be honest Good. let's get everyone in position because so far no one's dying uh, which it's pretty strong signaling from my po uh, perspective that we can move up without fear of retribution yeah let's move up with the dark lance And we're going to go for that high ground position soon-ish. Overwatch. Serve your 
one more round before we get new zombies. Okay. to go too far yet Back yeah for now we're taking moderate steps I would say Snipers up there definitely makes sense. Overwatch. And see it. Definitely paid that we weren't just charging in. Always gotta keep in mind that there will be faceless ones eventually. And with enough patience they will show. Specifically if you're not in a rush because the enemy is not really going to kill a lot of uh, civilians might as well just wait chill a little bit and you're good to go Alright, one thing at a time. Let's move away, I don't want to be caught in the spectral rupture. I figured that might be the case, I was... I still left him up there because I thought that the tower wouldn't fully collapse. My bad. Could have done that differently. Okay, so it's not going to be any high ground this um, turn for us then. There we go, we're putting our Templar forward. And we probably need to heal him in a second. That's not going to be a one-shot kill. And the melee attacks usually can't be reflected either. There we go, that's the hit. He's immune to um, the poison, but nonetheless, We're lacking either the scanning um, items that we could have or simply scanning protocol. So we will need to brute force this one here. And unfortunately as great as uh, the parry ability is, it does really not allow you to parry right after the attack, right? So you will always fall short for those ambush uh, bushes that they are setting up. This here on the other hand should be fine. Oh perfect, very good. I'm going to reload. This here should 
deal with an explosion and a lot of damage for him, which is fantastic. We're not going to go in because I know there is another uh, chrysalid up here and another chrysalid up here and another chrysalid up here. Just not going to play his game. Alright, we're going for full cover here. And a nice little hit. Our snipers can eventually wiggle him down. His long range capability is really not that great. Let's Gremlin heal just in case if he shoots back. And I would overwatch because why not? Could shred the last bit off of him. That might not too, be too bad. One thing that we can do is how about we're giving an aid, aid protocol over. We really don't need the rocket launcher for anything else could have done that a tiny bit earlier i suppose going for cover Nothing completely out of the ordinary here. Five points of damage. Or to hit him, that's four to seven. I don't want to lose our focus. Still got a lot of it. Might as well just continue to hit him for similar amounts of damage. And he'll probably summon some stun bounces. No, he's going for Spectral Army. That's fine for me as well. That's where our overwatch shots are coming in handy. He's still got a freezing grenade. All right. Moving over. It's one of them down. That's two of them down. Don't want to rush over. Like I said, we're really not in a huge hurry here. Not even needing to go to here and maybe invite further chrysalids into our life. Mm -mm. Really not. Can we hit him with a grenade? That's a million dollar question.
All right. Hmm, fifty fifty. Might not want to kill him yet. Mainly because when we're killing him, the warlock will get a full turn. If we're not killing him, he won't. So we're positioning ourselves here, knowing farewell that that's not going to trigger anything. We're instead going to overwatch, so when he's approaching, he's going to pay the consequences. Moving in. Overwatch again. Another overwatch. And you guessed it, another overwatch. Sun Lancers are going to lance, he's going to charge in, trying to lance us, and that's where his demise will start. There we go. Orlok should not get a full turn. There we go. Moving up to the Warlock. Marking him, even if we have not hit him. Moving into another flanking position. That's a nice hit. Love it. Reloading. And that's another flanking position. There we go. Chosen down. Now it's just up to the chrysalids. Alright, re reloading Overwatch, moving closer, Overwatch, and another Overwatch. Good, we simply got chrysalids left over. Moving up here, long watch, long watch, overwatch, overwatch, and everyone, uh, everybody has uh, reloaded. So this uh, chrysalid here should come out of his hiding hole very soon. One way of like smoking them out is just staying close to their range, but never really fully approaching them. Eventually, what that will trigger is they'll still charge in. This here is <laughs> this here is a mechanically interesting part as well. They can't jump over it because you cannot jump over it if over a medium object if there is an object behind. They can't even jump over this here, which means we're technically safe against chrysalids. It also means that they won't run at us because they don't have a movement uh, range just something to uh, to consider they can't end their turn like standing on standing on an object that's not possible Good. Soon they should be coming out. Oh, and interestingly enough, it's a bit more than just the chrysalids. Okay. 
<laughs> Another pack appeared. Okay, this should probably trigger a chrysalid. Well, too bad this guy had his chance. He unfortunately blew it. All right, moving in. Overwatch, Overwatch, another Overwatch. Reload Overwatch and Overwatch. Slowly but surely, all of the enemies are going to show themselves. And maybe, just maybe, we're going to have a flawless mission in terms of saving every single one of the civilians. Which would be great for the economy, because the more civilians you save, the better it is for the overall economy. I think all of them saved would be something like plus 40 or plus 50 per month. And that's a lot. It might not sound like it, but believe me, it accumulates. Overwatch, 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 and Overwatch. There we go. Chrysalid gets frustrated, does not no longer want to stay in cover. We're getting frustrated for not hitting. Holy shit, is that bad. Well, luckily we executed him at the end. I suppose you just gotta hit the ones that count, right? Okay, and I think there is one more chrysalid. Yeah. Damn right, there is. Well, soon there might be more chrysalids. <laughs> the Audacity of Bradford like not no one has has died so far at all it was pretty much a flawless mission first civilian dies and Bradford goes apeshit we're losing civilians left and right commander please remember to do your job Unbelievable. I can't even. Uh, I do understand why newcomers to the XCOM series get like demotivated. The voice lines should originally inspire a kind of a dramaturgic uh, importance and just making it more, I would say, flavorful. But what they really did is it, it's pretty meme if um, your commander continuously without helping telling you that you are doing a shit job so we got ourselves some parry here chrysalid tries to do something and gets his ass whooped And finally, let's get that chrysalid down. There we go. Target eliminated. Menace one five. Status confirmed. We're not picking up any additional contacts. The AO Good. Short of the one explosion with a with a tower, that was pretty solid. 
and we're back at the Avenger. Got ourselves one promotion there. Corporal Watson finally gets himself some lightning hands. Love it. Sergeant lights out. Well, you got some snipers now, that is for sure. Got rescued civilians 12 out of 13. Pretty okay. And look at that, almost 40 supplies. That's a lot. Considering that we have 250 supplies, like 40 is a lot. And that just from that one mission, and it's not just 40 supplies, it will accumulate over time. So the economy seems to be almost fixed. Now the only thing that is left in this campaign is to, before it is no longer a disaster campaign, is to maybe expand a bit further, getting over here to New, New India, having that second facility, and essentially, yeah, expanding further, I would say. So one thing that we would want to do is, where is our resistance communication? Right there, upgrade. Yeah, we're just getting that those additional contacts in. It's good, like it. Currently, no one is using the proving grounds. Might as well get even more contacts. Look at that. We got 11. That's good. Well, that's some solid contacts. So we figured that out. Got three cores. I would want to give him a spark. I think that's what we were intending to do anyways. So yeah, a spark would make the entire run even safer. A deeper roster usually helps you to deal with uh, situations better. And I feel his roster is still not deep enough. Let's go to the black market just to earn ourselves some money. Advent troops, yep, most certainly. Uh, wait a second, we might need those for the armor upgrades, but the purifier we can completely sell. Advanced expanded magazine is too good to sell. So we're ending up with some alloys that we need to part with and just some alarium crystals. We need these sected corpses for the mind shields. We certainly don't need the priests. Faceless corpses are needed for mimic beacons. So with 300 supplies, let's start a couple of things. Spark, yes please. Once that is done, we can move over uh, to resistance communi uh, communications. In terms of extra equipment, I still feel we're a bit behind the curve. So another blue screen rounds might make sense. Don't even have the mimic beacons researched yet. But yeah, I think more blue screen rounds and a flashbang grenade. MP grenade isn't bad either. Just for mechanical units, it, it helps a lot. Mind shield is good. I like it a lot. Med kits. We do have a couple of, a uh, couple of, just um, specialists that could benefit from the med kit. So I guess we're settling for another med kit. It's creepy the and we're going to sell a tiny bit more so that we have at least twenty-five supplies. Uh, that's usually how much covert operations cost. Let's make sure we do have enough for three covert operations. Good. And now we're continuing to build the radio relay. Got our sparks in the builds. 
that will give us another fire support unit which also is never tired perfect we're continuing to make progress on her hidden reserves not the best um, not the best um, covert um, ops reward we got a scientist here which is great breakthrough uh, not needed an engineer could be a thing but we're probably going for the reduction of the avatar uh, project progress because that's really what we're looking for might as well give his psionic characters some time to uh, to get extra stats there's nothing wrong with mobility on them matter of fact it is actually quite good to have it on them and he will spend quite some time with training regardless good continuing to build the radio relay And look at that, we got some really solid healthy income now. As extra events go, we got the spark soon, a supply drop, negative trade removal. Yeah, everything seems to be working in our favor. Now, one of the, the things that I wanted to do is we wanted to continue making contact right here. Yes, please. All right, experimental ammunition is now also um, finished completely instantaneous. And we might want to grab that extra intel over here. Probably not enough to really justify doing it. Six days, hmm. I'm on the fence. Might just scan for intel in the Reaper HQ. Yeah, let's do that. Intel on the stra strategy um, on the st strategy layer usually results in like 40 to 60 Intel, which more often than not, you will get the same out of it whilst you're just scanning at the Reapers. The two psionic characters are fantastically equipped, so when I'm handing back that save game, he will have no problem. And there is the engineer we were looking for. Also, under undercover civilians present in, uh, present in this combat zone can be contacted to gain valuable rewards. I think that that means we can recruit them. Couple of supplies. Ooh, and a major grenadier. Hmm. I think we're going for the grenadier. Having another major on the team, that is actually quite helpful. So it's probably going to be that. Overall, just looking at the campaign state, I think the next one will be our last, our last um, part in the Saving Your Disaster campaign. Realistically speaking, in six days, the Avatar project goes down to half. There is a facility that you can infiltrate anytime that gives you another one. So we're down at four. Facility infiltration also stops any building of new facilities. Might as well just want to do that. You can even uh, do that solo with a, uh, with a Reaper. Not going to be a problem at all. Like that's the avatar clock is definitely okay. I'll leave it with around 180. So if uh, 150, if... Uh, mm, you want to make contact with New India, that should not be a problem. And once I've taken care of yet getting another 
uh, Grenadier. The roster should be incredibly stacked. We got a spark coming in, easy. Can simply shift over another engineer here, getting that nice uh, little bonus. We got powered armor, plasma weapons coming in. Everything else is upgraded. The two psionic characters are easily on their way to become monstrously strong as they do have all of the abilities and just looking at the armory i mean realistically speaking if you look at it these are two kernels we got a major we're getting another major on top of it that templar is just a beast we got almost everyone to sergeant and lieutenant which is or which was the uh, the rank where most of them were dying. We got a pretty solid equipment as well. A nice little mixture of um, of uh, suits for additional explosives. We got uh, the uh, grenades ongoing. We got two specialists, which at the beginning was what I... Three specialists, actually, which was what I was aiming for to get more specialists in. Very healthy. And just from a class balance perspective as well, we're getting a third Grenadier. We have two Rangers, one of uh, which is a Colonel very soon. Enough Sharpshooters, got the weapons of uh, the Chosen, three Specialists, the Templar. I think we're just going to do that one more mission. And then this here is looking pretty much saved. It's a fantastic, um, uh, it was a fantastically difficult uh yeah mess up on the strategy layer but since we've now or since i've now invested so much time in untying this even from a research, research perspective if you look at it plasma rifles halfway done i would really go for the faces autopsy next for the mimic beacons to make it easier yeah, and then take it from there the plasma rifles easy not a problem anyways this brings us to the end of uh, today's episode. Next one will be kind of a bonus episode where we're going to kick some ass and get the last uh, major. And uh, then the saving the disaster campaign is declared saved. And I'll send back the saving game. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to uh, leave a comment uh, down below and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.